A day after laying out details of the Pentagon's new Asia-Pacific strategy, U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta visited Vietnam. On Saturday, he said the majority of America's warships will be deployed in the area by 2020. Let's discuss that now with American radio host and author Stephen Lenman. He joins us via broadband from Chicago. Stephen, Panetta's visit to Vietnam is likely to irritate China, which is unhappy with any U.S. buildup in the region. Does the U.S. fear it's losing its dominance globally? Well, America is doing everything possible to maintain its dominance glo uh, globally, Anissa. Uh, months back, and maybe a year ago now, the time goes by so fast, Ob Obama gave a speech. He said that America will increase its presence in two parts of the world, the Middle East, Wars have raged, do they continue, or they have been fought, or they plan to be fought from North Africa through the Middle East to Central Asia. And the other part of the world that Obama mentioned was East Asia. And on a previous RT interview, I said that North Korea is the punching bag, China is the target. China knows it just the way Russia knows it, being encircled with U.S. bases and America's missile shield that has nothing to do with Iran, it has everything to do with Russia, and America wants to establish basing rights or already has them on numerous countries in Central Asia, Japan, of course, and South Korea, long-standing. There's a great battle going on in South Korea now, not with the government, with the people of Jeju Island, a historic spot where the people have, have gone up against the government, building a base for Aegis attack uh, uh, dis uh, uh, destroyers or, or, or cruisers, uh, will attack ships with nuclear weapons. China knows this. China th believes that the South China Sea uh, is its waters. America wants to come in and usurp them. And I'll let you jump in, Anissa, but just imagine, what if China or Russia or any other country wanted its fleet off America's east or west coast. For the Congress, that would probably be an act of war. Well, I wanted to jump in and mention, of course, uh, that it's very clear that the U.S. is trying to ally itself with other countries there in terms of uh, trying to enforce those countries' maritime rights. Like you said, China, uh, Beijing largely claims a, a lot of that area there. How risky is it for those nations to side with the U.S. and possibly lose China as a key ally? It's amazing. It really is amazing. I, I, I've sat on here with another guest who, in my own program, a Japanese expert, that wouldn't it be wonderful, speaking of Japan, wouldn't it be wonderful one day if Japan one day grew up and stopped acting like a child? It's been since World War II, since 1945. America has, has had facing rights there ever since. It practically dictates Japanese policy. It's the same in South Korea. Why don't these countries grow up and act like adults instead of children. But look at Vietnam. Panetta shows up at Cam Ranh Bay for 37, 37 years ago. America left you a humiliating exit from the rooftop of the Saigon Embassy in April 1975. They decimated the country. The people of Vietnam still suffer from that war, and the Vietnamese want to cooperate with America. It's shocking, but it looks like they'll do it. Uh, Singapore, Australia, South Korea, the Philippines, Taiwan, it goes on and on. These countries are relying with America. China is a country they should be closer to. Why on earth do they want to get in between a tug of war between nations that have no business being belligerent to one another? At the same time, I'll say this. I can't imagine that America wants a war with either China or Russia. But there have been very extremist people in America over the years, going back since the end of World War II. And I still remember Curtis LeMay four or five decades ago advocating bombing, nuking Russia, even at the expense of losing three or four big U.S. cities. He called it a price worth paying. Thankfully, we had leaders around like Jack Kennedy who wanted nothing to do with lunatics like this. I'm not so sure America has leaders like that today. All right, Stephen Lundman, live with us on the line from Chicago via broadband. Thank you, Stephen, for your analysis.